All right, welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man. I will be casting this match between Pulse and Virtus Pro. Now, currently, this is the third game in the best of three series. Obviously, both teams are tied up one apiece. And there's that wristband. Virtus Pro learning their lesson <laughs> from the first match, where they're allowed to have Mini to get his wisp and then completely and utterly wreck them. Now, I've just noticed who we've got missing there. Small Gullig is back. Okay, a bit random, but he's back anyway. We have got Diet the band there. Uh, what have we got there? Band Wisp, Keeper of the Light, as well as Jakira and Darkseer being banned there as well. Now, I should mention that first game, of course, Pulse took that one over quite easily with a Wisp Tiny combo. Second match, though, while it looked really good in the early mid game there for Pulse, they were completely shredding Virtus Pro with big plays left, right, and center with their Bounty Templar Hunter. Unfortunately, assassin. mid game. They couldn't push hard mid-game because it came to the point where Bounty Hunter was being able to get picked off, couldn't burst down heroes as easily anymore. And he couldn't, because he didn't have a BKB, he couldn't get involved in a straight-up fist bite. And he couldn't just, he couldn't trade punches, basically. And in the end, it was very easy for him just to just hit him with a Ravage, hit him with an Ice Path, hit him with a Macro Pie, and he was gone. Even if they didn't kill him, he had to get the hell out of the fight and run for it. Which means no more tracks, and obviously no more burst damage from him, he had to just leave the fight. But often he'd get picked off as well. So that really slowed them down Five towards about the 35 minute mark. Bought time for Virtus Pro to get their farm back into gear, pick up their items on, on KSI on his next brother who had absolutely nothing. On Storm Spirit as well, got his base items, and then just the initiation factor from Virtus Pro took over from there on in. Allowed Tied this to jump in and completely disable Pulse before they could do it. You saw Radiant multiple teams. times they would specifically target Mini and make sure he couldn't dunk, so he couldn't pop out Iron Shells, couldn't pop out Surges. They just pick him off first, make sure he got killed before he could pop out Wall, Vacuum, Surges, Shells, you name it. Every single fight, they were targeting Mini so quickly with uh, the Storm Spirit. And then, of course, of course, the lack of stuns on the other team as well, on Pulse's side, really let them down in that turn. They just could not deal with the Storm Spirit. It was so easy for them just to leap about. Remaining. They didn't have a Hex, didn't have any good power stuns like Raw or anything to lock him down. Five and Storm Spirit just ran right across the lines. I, really, I still definitely question Reserve the last pick glitch, but you know what? That's how it went. Batrider, though, the first pick here for Pulse. Response, uh, the responding pick, though, Templar Assassin and Tidehunter. So two of the same picks from last match for Virtus Pro. They decided, you know what, why fix it if it's not broke? And Pulse decided, you know what, let's pop out the Undying. I was about to say, Pulse didn't ban Undying. That's very unusual. But welcome on this time round. Hopefully he will redeem himself with his Undying. Uh, game number two, not fantastic for him. Did get, sh well, killed a lot. And I mean a lot. By Storm Spirit. A bat rider, on the other hand, is going to be fairly nasty. Undying, Venomancer, a lot of things that Templar Assassin hates. She is not like Undying. The zombies are annoying. Venomancer, obviously, the poison is annoying. And then bat rider, sticky napalm. Bat rider is one of those heroes who can quite happily go toe to toe mid versus Templar Assassin. I'm just wondering if we'll see him there, because they might actually. They could. Pulse could actually go for a two-one-two here. They could go for bat rider solo mid. Undying, another hero, take the top lane, and then have a Venomancer. And another hero, baby, Venomance baby, at the bottom lane. Oh, they could actually be going for an aggressive try on here. We'll see. We'll see what Pulse decide to go with. But it's going to take a couple more picks before we can really see what they're planning. Virtus Pro, on the other hand, they're probably looking for another support here. Although last match they actually suicided. If they're doing the same plan from last time, they actually suicided the Tide Hunter. So they might not actually. They're probably looking for a support at all. And they they need their first one at this point in time. They picked up Jakiro last match, but obviously banned up this match. Rubik's still available, and of course there are some decent spells for him to steal as well on the enemy team. Getting your own tombstone is definitely quite nasty stuff. Bounty Hunter. And there we go, Virtus Pro actually picking the Bounty Hunter. Now these CIS teams definitely very much favor the messy, ganking-oriented uh, style of play. On the other hand, Pulse... Also really favor that same style of play, lots of ganking, lots of action, non-stop fights, that sort of stuff. And Bounty Hunter could definitely work against them. They will need to watch out for this because obviously if he gets the if he if they start losing these fights and tracks start going against him, it's very easy to ramp up to ramp up that gold deficit quite quickly. On the other hand though, if they stick together to a group of five, it's gonna be fairly annoying to try and push against them because at the moment they've got a lot of team fight potential. Tide Hunter is there, but uh, Templar Assassin and Bounty Hunter obviously most of single target. And they actually ban out the Crystal Maiden. That's an unusual ban. Don't really see Crystal Maiden banned all that much anymore. Really don't even see a pick all that much either. She used to be the premier support pick, but not so much anymore. 
generally speaking, gets completely overlooked. Not a bad hero by any means, just a lot of heroes people enjoy more at this point in time. It's aggressive, like really aggressive heroes like Shakira, obviously his range on his stun is huge, it's AoE. And then Rubik, obviously really, really versatile. <laughs> okay, we do see the Broodmother banned again. I honestly don't think Pulse would have worked in the Broodmother, but there we go, Broodmother being banned out. We do have the Nature's Prophet being banned out by Pulse as well. It looks like they are they don't want that counter push potential. And they might even ban or pick Tinker again, we'll see. Especially if they're planning to have Batrider jungle. They could indeed pick up a Tinker with the solo mid. Ten seconds remaining. They are gonna take their time here. Go into the overtime once again. Right now, Virtus Pro, they're looking for a support, so banning out some of the support's not a bad idea. They actually do ban out the Chen. Reserve time. I think they're a little bit worried about Chen pressuring the top lane there. As well as also messing them up in the fights. Obviously, Chen brings a lot of attrition value to the fights, but I think they should be more worried. And a lot of people really don't worry that much about Chen anymore. He's definitely still a good hero, just a lot of he's just a lot of teams have fell out of favour with him. So you know what, let's just pick some easy to play, just more effective burst style heroes. Final ban here. It's going to be Lashrak. Virtus Pro keeping that out of Pulse's uh, part of the Pulse keeping that out of Virtus Pro's hands. Pulse Virtus Pro on the other hand banning out the Scylla Bear. I really don't see Pulse having gone having uh, really making a run for Scylla. I don't generally see them play it in at all. As well as the fact that I don't think they would have put it in the suicide lane either. I think Virtus Pro really didn't need to ban that. But again, we'll see what Pulse decide to pick up. Rubik. And it's going to be Rubik for their support. Now there's definitely some really nasty spells to steal over on Virtus Pro's side. Of course, we get his hands on Ravage. That is fantastic. Either that, though, failing that, obviously stealing track is actually a hell of a bo bonus as well. You th start throwing that around, get a few ganks here and there. A lot of extra money. Templar Assassin, steal the ward, steal the tr um, refractions as well. Also nice stuff that you can get your hands on. So Rubik definitely has some valuable targets at the moment. And of course, spamming Fade Bolt is nice in the middle of a fight as well, and brings them some much needed disable. Of course, they could, in fact, I really feel like they could do with another good disable on top of that, but we'll see what their final pick is. They've got Venomaz and Rubik for the support. Undying, Batrider, Batrider likely to be taking, I think Batrider might be the solo mid in this case, which means me to question, are they going to try and try this? Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Witch Doctor being picked up here by Virtus Pro. Now, this is definitely an unconventional pick. The picked up Witch Doctor, and when we, off, when we occasionally see him, Sometimes he gets picked up for his aura, and basically they, well, not so much an aura, but his toggleable heal, and basically he gets used to support pushes in. The AoE heal is really strong, and it helps people push in quite a bit, and just sustain the push. Obviously, he's a little mana hungry. Has a nice uh, fight for all. Uh, has a nice ult for fights, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to keep him rolling. But against this lineup, there's not too many stuns. He might actually be able to manage it. Five seconds remaining. And now the final, the final pick here for Pulse. They've got the two supports sorted. I think they're looking for another primary farmer here, maybe even a solid mid, depending where Batrider is going. They might have been planning for Undying and Rubik to go together. Batrider take the jungle. Venomat take faceless the bottom over the hero. And there we go. It's going to be a faceless void. That is an interesting choice. Didn't really see that one coming, but we'll see how Pulse is on the place. I think they're going to be fairly aggressive with the faceless void. Use his ult early on in the fights. And we'll see how it works out for them. This may actually be Dirge. This could actually be Rubik, Venomancer, and Vases Void in the bottom lane. Dirge taking the solo mid, and then Batrider jungling, and then them just... And then Pulse is going, you know what, screw the top lane. Not even worried about it. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. We're going to go into the overtime again for Virtus Pro. Their final pick here. I think they're going to... I think they'll probably go with time. one support here. They've got Titaner already. They might actually pick up a jungler. We still have Enchantress left if they want to go for jungling heroes. Which could also try and abuse an open lane as well, knock it down really fast, get some really early tower gold there. Lich. And it's going to be a Lich. So they're going to pick up another support here again. Not dead set on that Lich. I really think he was not fantastic last match at all, but we'll see how he turns out this one. I mean, one foul ult from Void and Lich could uh, completely decimate a team there. Anyway, hopefully no foul ults from Void. And let me just call out the players here. 
<laughs> Alright, so playing for Pulse. We have Mini on the Batrider, Wagamama on the Undying, Smolga League there on the Rubik, Rishin playing Faces Void, and it looks like Fishbone were playing Better Mance. It looks like who was that had to go? Pinoy had to leave by the looks of things. Anyway, on the die side, oh, no Virtus Pro need to pause. Anyway, on the die side, we have Ammon playing the Tide Hunter, KSI playing Lich, NS on the Witch Doctor, Bandit playing Bounty Hunter, and Triple X playing Templar Assassin again. It looks like dual lanes in this case. It looks like they're actually going to get farmed. Tide Hunter is actually being cashed there. He's actually going to get farmed up. So it's going to be 2 on 2 there for Virtus Pro. They're going for. The farmed up Tynum, they're going to try and get him involved in the early mid game with maybe an early mech, early pipe, that sort of stuff. Mid lane is going to be obviously the solo Templar Assassin, and bottom lane is going to be bandit supported by KSI. I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about this though. How come we never see a Phantom Assassin pick? If you want to see a Phantom Assassin pick, there actually was one in the, uh, in the, uh, what was it, uh, it was, just, no, it was in this tournament, it was in the Premier League Season 3. Uh, going back a couple of weeks, there was, I think it might have been Empire of Virtus Pro who picked it, but there was a Templar Assassin pick, and it pretty much saved the game, a Phantom Assassin pick. It pretty much completely destroyed the other team. I will try and figure out which game it was later, but it's in our replays. If you want to check it out, you can go through them and check it out. Of course, for our VODs, you can just check out this channel or go to the PremierLeague.eu and then visit our YouTube page from there. All the VODs get uploaded there. Or alternatively, buy a ticket. You can look it up here. 30 seconds to battle. Welcome, Mama. Going top, this might actually be an offensive trial. In fact, I, th I get the feeling that somebody's going to break off down here and help Void out. Especially if it's going to be... Oh, wait a minute. Where's Bounty Hunter going? No, no, Bounty Hunter is still likely to go bottom. Especially if it's 2v1. Somebody's definitely going to break off and help out Void. I get the feeling it might even be Rubik, just because he's going to have the better uh, lane control there. With his range, and it might just be down to Wagamama and Fishbone to tough it out in the top lane. Double damage room being picked up there by the Batrider. It's going to be Batrider solo mid versus Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin not really going to enjoy that all that much, especially now that Bat has a double damage room at the start of the game. Never much double fun that is. Wagamama opening up there with Decay. Blocking wall being thrown down there by the Radiant side. It is going to be an offensive try. Now the question is, how long can Void last down here? I think they may need to rotate support for sure. Forget it. Nine. Meanwhile, Titan can much more afford to fall behind. Templar Assassin. And they've always got Templar Assassins back up in mid. In terms of carry, as well as the Bounty Hunter, of course, can cause a little bit of damage in terms of the semi carry. But there we go, they're rotating away. Rubik is going to be rotating towards mid, probably going to try and help gank Templar Assassin if he can. In fact, five stacks. Oh, nope. Skin A Farm falls off there. Only one stack now. There we go, there's that Firefly. Here comes Rubik's going to pick him up if he can. There we go, there's the lift. Going to dump him. Where are we going with that one? I thought he was going to throw him the Firefly, but it looks like it might be enough just to run him down this direction anyway. As it looks like Templar Assassin does not have. Oh, wow, well, that is somewhat embarrassing there. Unfortunately, they will manage to get themselves first blood there. Templar Assassin is going to take the first one. Batrider gets a bottle at the very least. But Templar Assassin also gets her own bottle plus the experience there from the kill. So a bit of a misplay there by Pulse, unfortunately. Rubik. Picking up the aggro in the middle of that fight and then not throwing him down on the Firefly. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Meanwhile, the dual lane up mid here. Wagamama sitting on 9 and 5. His last season is going quite nice. And meanwhile, time to 3 and 0. And it appears to be mostly because his support is busy pulling more than anything else. Try and pick up Lich as well, possibly in a second. Yeah. 
There we go. There's a jump in. Can they get this one down? There's the lift up. Going to throw him backwards here at the same time as it looks like KSI now still trying to get away. A couple more hits. There's a bash. Oh, dear God. The rage the Lich would be feeling. That level 1 bash, actually no, it's a level 2 bash, time lock did actually prop 15%, got the hit in at last, got the kill there as well. Invisibility. <laughs> Meanwhile up the top lane, a bit of harassment there, there's the slow being thrown in, Decay wants to get as well, Airman now, I'm not having much fun, the tree's being chopped down there by the tombstone, tombstone also adding some damage, and there's not much Airman can do to try and escape here, finished up there, by a soul rip. Things starting to get a little bit messy for Virtus Pro, but of course they can quite easily pick up the mid-game, depending on Bounty Hunter's abilities to swing things around. A more solo mid here at the moment. Batrider struggling just a bit. I think that uh, bottle has been somewhat annoying for him, although actually, no, he's got his own being shuttled straight back out there. Bottom lane, they could try and take another run here as it looks like Void unexpectedly has control over this lane. Small helping out. Lich now returning, or not? He's waiting for that four minute rune at the moment. He will get its regeneration. Some bounty hunters being harassed there. Here, he finds himself a regeneration rune. I don't see any potential clash in the map there. At the moment, Pulse is farming solidly. 19 and 8 there for Wagamama on his dirge. 19 and 5 there for the Temple Assassin. And 19 and 5, or rather 19 and 3 there for Batrider. So all of them fairly close in terms of farm. Now, Mini, though, thought about going in, but changed his mind. Only one stack there on the Skin I'm not really worth it. A slow down Baron. Baron may regret this. Throws out the flame break though. Templar Assassin taking some damage there. Can she get another hit there? Pops the oh, refraction once again. We'll actually manage to back off from this successfully. Bounty Hunter just blocking a creep spawn there. Lich returning to this lane once again. Gonna try and help defend Void. Unfortunately, level of uh, defend Bounty Hunter. Unfortunately, level two. Not really gonna be able to do a lot of harassment. Void currently level five and level three there on Rubik. Uh -oh. Once Rubik hits level four and Void gets level six, it's a uh, potential for another kill there. There's another pause there from Virtus Pro. Needs to quickly DC at the moment. Let's check the gold chart at the moment. Small advantage there to the radiant side to Pulse. Same wise for experience, not a whole lot either. Which Doctor still trying to pull this kind of leaves Titan a little bit vulnerable, as you see there. He's not getting a whole lot of fun. Twenty and one at the moment. It's a little bit behind. Definitely falling behind the dirge. Time though still has regen left. Apparently Sonic traps don't show up while we're paused. I'm I'm looking at these lineups though, I feel like I like the Radiance lineup a lot more. I just kind of feel that the Chain Frost is going to be a little bit too hit and miss and they're really rely on that Ravage to set the fight whereas if they don't get the uh, don't get the perfect Chronos they don't get the uh, perfect uh, Chrono off from Void then they can quite easily just fall but they've got the Tombstone Decay there the ult there from Undying they've also got Batrider to try and isolate and pick people up and at the same time also we have a Venomancer there as well plenty of nasty firepower Whereas if Chain Frost fails for the die, it's pretty much ravaged and that's it. Maybe they'll get off a good. 
ult there from uh, Witch Doctor, but at the same time, I'm kind of worried. There are a fair few disables that can knock him out of it. So 200 gold, probably should get. We pick up wards next in just a moment. I'm just wondering if Faceless Void is going to do a fast Midas here. I think it's definitely possible. If Faceless Void is a hero that can really benefit, not only does he benefit the farm, but of course the attack speed is really crucial for his time lock. And there we go, they're ready to go. up there from Wagamama, getting deep under the enemy tower, deciding to keep going for it. They've still got wards up as well, they can keep trying to push this. Do you want to be careful not to put it within deny range? Rubik finding a haste drone. Triple X is going to come down here and try and bottle it, but Rubik's going to pick it up, make sure Triple X can't have it. There you go, Tombstone tossed up in the top lane. Can they sneak in a deny here is the question. Doesn't look like it. Welcome I'm gonna take that kill. And it's trying to get around there. Not happening though. Not happening at all. He's trying to get around from behind and set up a casket there, but it wasn't gonna happen. Gets scattered out there by a plague world, of course, something that they're fantastic for being dropped as scouts. Once again, headed to mid. They might be able to set something up, although getting spotted up there by Rune as well. This could get messy for him. There we go. They last through him there. They're going to try and drag him back, knock him back there with this flame break. And again, NS likely to take it out there as well. Good little kill from the Radiant side there. That's what I mean. This could be problematic for the die, the fact that they kind of lack the disables. Off the top lane, Wagamama and Fishbone just they're not letting up. They're going, you know what, let's take these towers, let's keep pushing. Gonna put some serious pressure on this top tower. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Void's still farming away there. Has been tracked up though now, has to be a little bit more wary. Starting to get harassed fairly hard. We need to back off. Meanwhile, it looks like they've got Titan Skulky about beneath them up top. Cold. Regeneration. Bounty Hunter, she's still the rune there. Jack in the room, but there's the old death for Here comes Titan though, he's got his own ultimate. Now the Radiant side fleeing there, so Ravage gonna knock down Mini. And the cast coming in, gonna lock down Mini as well as Small. Small gets hit by the creep, gets taken out there by Bounty Hunter, as well as Mini getting taken out there by the Templar Assassin. A good double kill there from Virtus Pro. Let's just know that they're still in this game. Meanwhile though, Wagamon is still pushing their top tier 2 tower. Is under attack. Might even have Temple Assassin headed up there right now. See, Lich mostly left to his own device at this point in time. Hasn't really done a whole lot. Bounty Hunter, on the other hand, he could probably start getting rolling on the ganks. Level 3 Janata, level 2 tr level two on the Shuriken Toss, 1 on Windwalk, 1 on Track. Now 
got Undyne moving up once again. Teleport coming in. It's going to bottom lane though. Potential fight down the bottom lane. They pick him up there. It's Templar Assassin going to get chased. He uses so slow already. And now we've got Reach and Charge. He's going to do a bit of damage there to the support. He's going to chase up Templar Assassin though. They get the kill there as well. Slow once again. Going to try and slow down Lich with him. If you can get one more hit off, he'll take him with him. There we go. One last hit, however. Can he get away himself? And there's the slow there from Venomancer. Shuriken Toss gets thrown out, doesn't do enough though. <laughs> Tempo's had moved in the ward, went to the ward block, didn't quite manage though, need to be back a little bit further there, might have worked. They pick up a couple of heroes, Void also getting taken out in the fight unfortunately. Bit of a mistake there, Batrider though does get the kill there on Tidehunter. Meanwhile, Welcome Mama has rotated the mid, still working on his mech there, has picked up Arcane Boots as well. It's KSI. He harassed there. NS also rotating back towards mid. Orange also coming back to mid. In fact, a lot of heroes come back to mid here. Welcome Mama actually rotating to the jungle instead. Welcome, what are you building next after this mech? I'm hoping to see another old stick. I really like that old stick on him. See the decay once again, stealing all that strength away. Oh, it appears to be doing Battle Fury first. Well, Rubik just pulling, catching up his farm that way. Wards, no wards getting thrown down up there. Oh, the dive spotted Radiant Wall, but it's suddenly doing nothing about it so far. Tidehunter, he's going to set up this fight here. Does he have a Ravage up? Yes, he does. He goes for Ravage. There's the Ravage. That's the kill there on Fishbone. Casket bound between them. And there's the ult there from Witch Doctor along with the Maledict. And Wagamon are likely to fall here as well. Gush going to take out Venomancer, who came back to try and get a kill. However, the poison there is going to be enough. Venomancer gets a kill as well. Dyer's Middle Tower is under attack. Gank here on the bottom. There's a Batrider as well, causing some trouble. Meanwhile, there was a bit of a scrap down here, as it looks like. Triple X now backing up just a little bit there. As it looks like the mid tower. Can they get a deny? There's the ult. They don't get the deny at all. They got a four star Templar Assassin a little bit forward there as well. She's getting picked up there by Telekinesis. Going to walk straight into the Burning Flames here. She's running for her life. Can she get away? Hasn't been tracked up just yet. Now she's tracked in. Pops the bell. Gets dusted up though, and will get taken out. Here, Casket as well, and we'll pick up the Batrider and a bit of a revenge attack there. And now we've got Bounty Hunter running for his life. Time to also getting dropped there. They've dropped the Tombstone down, but now you mentioned pick him up there. Picking up the Witch Doctor, hurling him back into the fight as well. The zombies are doing way too much damage. It's slow as well. Looks like we should lose a tier 2 tower on top of this. And Pulse, it's just. Oh, you know what? They're pub training, but who the hell cares? It's effective and it's a legitimate strategy. Just grouping up and pushing and making it very hard for the gank oriented lineup that uh, Burst Pro have to work. Of course, the Bounty Hunter and the Templar Assassin really just can't find room to work with Edgeways. Though we've got around about a 12 minute blink dagger on our, on our uh, Templar Assassin. wander around the mid lane. He is possibly about to come under pressure though. Looks like the pub train has rotated the mid. It's going to push in from here. Tracks getting thrown out. They need to be careful not to give away these track kills. Of course we saw exactly how effective they were last match and now Blue also rotating to help out mid. Popping his invis room. 
Yeah, the Oglyph gets pumped. More tracks being thrown about. And we've got heroes on all sides trying to descend upon them. Now Ravage is up this time around. Here comes Tyler. There's the Ravage to set up this fight. Misses Ruby. Ruby though getting hit by Mali. Steals the Ravage. Pops it off again. Great counter attack there from the Radiant side. We've lost Witch Doctor. We've lost Tide Hunter. As it looks like now, Bounty Hunter trying to flee. He's visible. The zombie gets the kill there. And now they're going to run down Lich as well. There's the sticky napalm. Bat Rider sharing his lovely, lovely napalm all over Lich. Lich now. One more auto attack. There we go. We'll finish him off. And that's a wipe. They trade for Rubik. Man of the moment. That steal there on the Ravage. He walked just out of range and stole that Ravage. If he'd been hit by that Ravage, the Anchor Smash would have come in time to cancel it. Nicely done there by, I think that's Smulg, isn't it? It is indeed Smulg who did that. And there we go, Pulse. Let's check on this. It's, let's see that ramp up there. You get a couple of towers out of that and a nice big juicy team fight. 7.5k plus gold advantage experience wise as well shoots up as well 7.5k on top of that as well now NS needs to be careful here comes Airman and there's a track being spread out once again Void is uh oh gets disjointed but Void now in a bit of trouble actually he's still got his time he's still got his leap up he can get away if necessary continual slows there from triple X so I need a short pause there Alright then, so, Invisibility has been spotted by Rubik, who might in fact, in fact he's still got, I actually know he died in the fight, so he's lost the Ravage, but he might actually pick that up again and try and steal another big spell. Ravage, not up for another full minute though. Minia has picked up a 4 star as well, got his scroll, needs to shovel that off, he wants to have that, he wants to have a teleport scroll on him at all times, if at all possible. Invis being picked up there by the Radiant side. It was a moment, and it looks like again, Hub Train is the order today. The they're going to move in and keep pushing this down. See Small just hulk, just sort of skulk around here, ready to pick someone up unexpectedly and grab him. And of course, Batrider is actually going to jump on them with him. Now what they don't know here is that the ward is there, spotting them up, so the die, they know exactly where they're moving right now. Again, they're still spotted up, however, they don't know that Smog is here. Smog now rotating forwards, going to try and get in behind some, scout things out, get in behind somebody and set them up, although he's about to run out of invis here, needs to be careful. And there we go, he's going to try and pick off KSI, Batrider though, not quick enough to get in here. And Ravage up in 15 seconds. Bandit, nowhere to be seen, or oh, there we go, he's coming in from behind now. Also got Witch Doctor NS also headed over. He's been spotted up. They know he's coming now. They're jumping in. Tide Hunter moving in for the Ravage. Gets picked up though. And Rubik should be in position to steal. There's that Ravage. Did they get the steal up? I don't think Rubik managed to get it. Rubik has managed to get taken out. As it looks like the ult there. Poison Nova. It's going to get taken. Going to drop that. Have it. Wagamama is on the case. Can he take out uh, X, Triple X here? Doesn't look like it. Another refractor. Another null there. So he does actually clean him up there with another decay. And Bandit also retreating. So it looks like a bit of a 3 for 2 trade there. Unless Void bought back in that fight. I don't think he did. As now he's popping down his own. Void getting stuck and he's going to pick off Bandit. Can he get NS a bash? We'll do it here. Procs a bash. NS though just gets away. Pops has the time there to pop his magic wand and walk away from that. But Void picking up some nice kills there. He must have managed to disable Rubik in that last fight. I really thought he had time to get free, uh, to get clear of the Ravage and get ready to steal it. This time around he did not. This is definitely, pr this is probably worrisome. This is really, I think, worrisome for Verge Pro because they don't have a late game answer to Void. Void is going to wreck them, pure and simple. Void is going to leap away there, should be able to escape. But yeah, Void with a 12k advantage at 18 minutes in and a late carry the size of Void and Virtus Pro without something like that to answer, this is not a good situation. See, look at that. 390, 430, 480 for Void. 480 gold per minute for the hard carry, for the pure right click hard carry at 19 minutes into the game. And he doesn't have something silly like a Midas to increase his farm like that. And it's mostly just been all of these tower downs have just accelerated his farm so quickly. 
allowed him to pick up this early Battle Fury, and now he can just go to town on stuff. See, he's just gonna clean. He's just gonna eat through these ancients, eat through all these creep camps, waves, and creep stacks, whatever you want. He's gonna farm extremely fast. Chicken Dyer's Witch Doctor, I think he's trying to build himself a BKB. I don't know how much this is going to help him, though. There is a superior magic disabling the other team, unless he's just hoping to get himself... Unless he's hoping to get himself a uh, Argonus, but I find that a little bit weird on the support hero. He's going to get a farm for it. Oops, wrong, item, wrong tab. There we go. Let's bring up this, see what people have got item-wise. I see a couple of BKBs in the work there, although possible gank in mid there. Is he going to try and pick off Dirge? Dirge now getting caught out completely. Hit by the Yules there. Wagamama, though, likely to fall. Wagamama really just where he shouldn't have been there. Man, nothing really new there. Pulse is... Uh, Fishbone is actually just going to bulk up a little bit. This is fairly normal for the Venomance. So we'll buy a Vitality Burst and just hold onto it just to keep himself... Make himself harder to kill. That said, though, Dire decided, you know what? Let's use our Dire Side Adventure. Let's go after the Roshan Pit now. It looks like they're worried. Oh, okay, it looks like they know that Pulse know that they are in there. Pulse headed in straight away. Going to try and set something up now. We've got Ravage up. Chronosphere also up, but they want to try and use that. You see the counter wards getting thrown down as well. I think Pulse might suspect that. I think they're going to get Venomous to throw a ward over here in a second just to keep an eye on things. Let's see Void actually no leaping up on the high ground there. Okay, they spotted them. They know where they are now. Triple X is over here. And he's all team. all these teammates are in tow as well. Now Wagamama coming from behind this, be careful, doesn't get isolated, Void now jumping, he gets the ult off there, gonna try and pick off Bandit, can they get the stables down, they get the damage on Void, Void also leapy away, the Mel does hit him, oh, just serious damage here, as we see the drag there from the last two, Lich down some trouble, gets hit by the flame break, gets taken out before he can drop his ultimate, Titanus still has Ravage up, can he find room to drop it, Wish Doctor is actually ulting away like crazy, there's the Ravage, Rubik gets hit, the range on the Ravage is too great now, he steals something, but he only gets Anchor Smash, Void is back in the mix, Void gets a stun, can they get a final hit in there. There's a gush. It's not enough though. They get the kill. The Maledict goes down, but no follow-up damage. And that's a four-for-one trade. Void tearing them apart, dashing in, dashing out. And they will get that four-for-one trade. And they're probably gonna. No, I don't think they'll get a tower out of this as well. They don't have the ability to sustain this just yet. They need a mech before they can go for that. But in the end, this is exactly, this is all that Pulse need to do. They don't have to take early ratchets. They can take their time. They have a ticking time bomb and it's Paceless Void. They're even going to give, they're going to give him a Roshan uh, Nagus now as well. And there we go, his Black King Bar being finished up on top of that. KSI now looking a little under farmed. There we go, first Aegis of the match. Black King Bar, only a hundred-ish gold away for Void. In fact, Void feeling so confident he's going to dash up here and farm up this wave of creep. And there we go. Black King Bar finished. And they're saying, let's go through the enemy jungle and pick somebody off. They could find Bandit. Bandit also working on his Black King Bar. Definitely not having the run that <laughs> Risha was having last match. Throw up an offensive war there, can see what's going on in the jungle. This is exactly the kind of situation that they heard us bro right now. They have no room to farm, they've got no towers, they're scared of the enemy team on top of that. They're worried about Dirge being picked off by Dirge, Void, Batrider, those heroes there. They're really, really scared about it. You see how they're bottled up. They're not really farming anything else. They're, they're going to try and get in the offensive now. They're popping the smoke. And in fact, it looks like they're going to make a run on Batrider. Batrider is actually possibly about to die here. Unless if he four staffs away at the right moment, he might actually escape there. And blinks out that double tap there. Spidey senses tingled and he escapes in the nick of time. In all honesty though, he probably could have forced staffed away and then blinked out after that. Even if he'd been hit by a couple of ticks of damage. But there we go, smoke wasted and then more importantly time wasted. The little limited amount of farm they could have been getting from this bottom lane has not been utilized. Now Wagamama, which avoid Wagamama with oh wow, Wagamama actually with the Yules. That's a very different build there on Undying. Haven't seen Yules on one before. In fact, I, I almost think that Yules has been pronounced oil, as in Euler's disc. I might actually ask about that later. But anyway, he's going to fade bolt his way through there. It looks like, nope, they are just going to back off. 
Paul said, they're pretty sure Paul's going to say, you know what, it's your, your game. You've got to try and bring this one back. It's our game to lose. We're just going to sit and farm, keep you bottled up inside your base, and you've got to try and make some moves here. Because playing reactively, they have the chance to, especially since there are no blink daggers on the enemy team yet besides Templar Assassin. Pulse have the ability to counterattack very easily, especially when they have something as durable here as Undying, who's also working towards his own. I'm going to step there. See Venomance building himself. Looks like he's actually going to build himself a uh, Vanguard in a second. Then we have Batrider also picking himself up. Oh, Mystic Staff. And the question is will this be Sheavis or will he go for a Hex? Could be either, in all honesty, against that team. Sheevers is also very welcome. The extra armor, definitely very welcome, of course. Their hex is trying to shut down Titan. A hex is always valuable. Because right now, the only thing that VP really fear, I think, is Titan on his ult. And possibly if Witch Doctor gets in a good position for ult, then maybe, but Void can honestly just bash his way through that. He won't really care too much. And look at this. I Look at this line that uh, Mini's drawing. I think he's saying keep them bottled up in here. If they stay bottled up in here, they are not getting any farm, and we are going to crush them. See that deficit continue to climb. This is not just so much that uh, the farm for the Radiant's out of control. It's just that Virtus Pro currently are not getting any farm. And now Barrider jumps in on top of him. Firefly, Lasso, and then drags him back along with a, frame, a flame break. There is no follow-up, though, and it looks like that uh, Triple X will be allowed to escape. Oh wow, actually they see a ward there. Interesting spot for one. And they can't... Oh, there we go. Finally managed to hit it. And somebody's got a gem, I think, on the radiant side. It's definitely something that's really... There we go. Venomancer has a gem. And this is definitely really, really valuable to keep the bot up. Because they have no vision. They don't know where you are. And they're always super scared. And you saw last match when... Uh, Pulse, they started to get bottled up. What was the first thing they did? They got vision of the enemy team. They did this, not by wards, because obviously the prevalence of gems in that match made it impossible, but by Bounty Hunter running around spamming track on everybody. And that's something they couldn't avoid, couldn't... Every time they came close to this, Bounty Hunter would throw a track, and that would allow them to see exactly where the enemy team is, and then find the gaps that they could go to to farm, just get a little bit of money. Obviously, it wasn't enough to save them in the end, but it is something they can do. In this case, Bounty Hunter now teleporting back to the top, or back to the mid, as Venomancer teleports back to the bottom lane to defend it from the push. Dirge though, sitting on only 600. In fact, he should have some items actually. He's died a couple. Of, actually, he's picked up the point boosted there, but he's had that for a little while now. As it looks like Batman now getting a spot of trouble there. Four staff guy blinks, disjoints, and that shuriken will do nothing. Half Life Two saw there. Uh oh, Venomance doing some trouble. There's the slow, however, no follow up though. I think Tia is really worried. She doesn't know where the enemy team is. She thinks, hmm, Fishbone could be bait. Doesn't want to bite. Now we see Phasis Ford picking up a Daedalus now, he's stacking the damage, and once he gets his done, I think we might see Pulse decide it's time to make a run, especially if uh, Batrun has finished up his item too. Looks like he's going for a Hex, and he hasn't decided to buy up the armor piece. There we go, I hope Void jump on something, it's just creep, never mind. Virtus Pro again, too, st too scared to step out. What has he picked up there? Oh, four stuff there for Rubik as well. Just general little support. I'm just like, you know what? We don't, we're not really needed the front line, so let me just back up here and get my own little bit of farm. Having a mini, a danger mini picked up here. There's a shuriken. Needs to four stuff away. Four stuffs. So he's got to blink in one second. This is what I mean. Even if they go after him with these slows, he has the opportunity to uh, four stuff out. And it will probably buy him enough time to blink, especially if he flame breaks everybody away at the same time. Illusion! A bit of a pub train happening here from Virtus Pro. They're stacking up, rolling around as a group. And they're gonna smoke up here and try and get a pick off. I think they I think they have sick of many surviving these ganks. Or actually no, they're going into the They're going into the enemy jungle here and they might actually find Rubik, which wouldn't be a very valuable kill. On the other hand, killing many would be quite valuable indeed, because obviously, slowing down a hex. Actually, no, it's Shivas, never mind, it is Shivas. And there we go, they're tracking Rubik. An easy kill there. 
Zebra will be yelling, why? I don't know, because they want... Unfortunately, by wasting their time doing that, they're actually going to suffer a fair bit of damage here on their towers. Both lanes being pushed now. Void pushing the top lane. And you hear him, he's speeding up his attack value. He's even going to use the illusions to do it. Damage still being dealt to the mid-town. This is gradually going to ship away. The kill on Rubik really not of any great value there. Now Fishbone finding some more wards. Just going to pop them down. Keep the offensive wards up. Void again. Nope. Just jump into creep. Still waiting on that day list. As it looks like. Uh-oh. Mini now into trouble. Mini about to get picked off. Nice grab there by Virtus Pro. They seal the deal there. A slow being thrown there on Fishbone. But Void's coming. They're all going to run away. Unfortunately, just slightly misses that. Will manage to pick off Tide Under, but he wanted to get Templar Assassin as well. Actually, he's going for two. He'll get two. There goes the Witch Doctor as well. Templar Assassin finds a kill. She takes that better answer. But I don't think Void cares too much about that. And now they're going to try go 2v1. I don't think this is a good idea for Bandit. Bandit about to cop a stun. No. Void leaping forward. Gets a slowdown. Can he fade in? There's no stun once again. Void still going toe to toe with him. Actually, might be getting outnumbered here. Although Rubik is here to help. They will get the kill going, Void. And now Rubik actually about to die as well. Giving away a few kills. Rubik four staffing away. Although, this could be a bit of an issue because Templar Assassin's got to slow in a second. My flesh. Rubik needs to turn around. Telekinesis, although he doesn't have time. A double kill there for Triple X. And finally, Virtus Pro finding some momentum. It's just a shame. It's at 20k behind on terms of gold. So that's barely going to make a dent. Maybe they could pick up a tower as well. Faces Void, 3.4k. He's about 200 away from finishing his Daedalus, and he doesn't have to save for buybacks either. Obviously, all the outer towers still up. Longer Mama missing with the decay. There we have Barrow charging in four stars board. He's going to try and pick up NS, however, cops a Maledict the face, and he grabs a creep. Not a great play by Wago there. A Ravage being blown, and the tombstone gets dropped out. Do we have any more reinforcements? Shaman, I don't think Venomous is going to do too much, but he's showing off anyway. Venomous says, you know what, why not our help? There we go. They will actually get two kills here. Wago Mama, too strong, going for three. He's been slowed down by Lich. Shuriken there on Fishbone. Fishbone is still trying to get clear here. Slow by Jinata. Windwalk there as well. Soul Rip King coming. No, it's going to be a decay. going to heal, or rather just hurt them there. Soul Rip now up once again. There's another decay. Soul Rip not going to do enough. And Bounty Hunter will manage to walk away. But a double kill for a double kill there. Two for two. And more importantly, Ravage is down and now Void is up. If they wanted to. I mean, if they really wanted to do, Venomans could buy back. Batrider couldn't, but they can do without him. In fact, they're just going to go, you know what? Void's up. Let's go and do Roshan. Especially since Ravage is down. They don't have to worry about that now. Also... Well, actually, by the time Rosh is up, that'll be back up, so never mind. Boy, just taking more and more creep. As you see the gold per minute just jump and jump and jump. It's going to find out the net worth. There we go. Boy, actually not that much far ahead of Templar Assassin. It's just that Templar Assassin is not as strong late game as Void. Void is just a lot more powerful. Nice little drop in... Right about 2.5k drop there. It's going to pull up the item chart as well. So we see the data list is done for Void. He has finished it now. And he should be able to pretty much solo Roshan by himself at this point in time. You see Virtus Pro Triple X has actually picked up a Desolator Bowder. It's a little bit too little to add. The problem is he is the only hero with any decent amount of farm on their team, really. Bounty Hunter's a little bit behind, but still not that great. You see the Batrider, though. Pops the Firefly. Has been tracked up. Rubik getting hit by Shuriken. Slowed there by the Sonic Trap. Nico Nishin is coming back out. And it looks like Virtus Pro, they can't decide whether or not they're going to commit there. And Void just goes back to chewing on Roshan, because he can. He's critting for 800 at the moment, and it looks like Virtus Pro decided, yeah, alright, we can't take this Roshan, let's just take a tower. That's all we can do right now. And at the same time, Paul's like, well, you know, if you want a base race on out of towers, we'll go for your racks. They're just going to charge straight up there. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro, they do actually manage to get the tower, they're going to teleport en masse. They've got a TP back now en masse to defend this mid rack, so they're going to lose it. We go to the stun in there, Batrider though, oh, the flame break just knocking him out of range, doesn't get the lasso down. That would have been a blow and a half there to lose Tide Under, Ravage is up in five seconds now. Tide Under getting ready to move in, the slow being thrust down right there, is that Rubik with that slow at the moment? It is, Rubik with those slows, those are his in fact. Batrider now being hit by Shurik as well, slow being tossed in there, that one in by Templar Assassin, I think, tower down, can they get a lasso down again? Just eventually get back there, Bandit just apparently avoiding in last two, but not this time around. Witch Doctor getting caught out, dragging the Firefly. He can take out. There's a Ravage. Does Ruby get a steal? He steals something. What does he get? He picks up an Anchor Smash and stack instead. He was a little bit too slow. Chain Frost does not do enough damage. Another Soul Rip there. Still only one hero down. Boy still has his ult up though. 
And he's just, you know what? Not getting overconfident. Voice says, alright, let's seal the deal on this one. Let's make sure we get the build and win this game. And now they're going to sweep for the bottom rack. So they have enough firepower to do it. There's the slow there from Shivas. Doesn't hit anybody though. Temple of Assassin avoiding it. Blinking away. Wagamama though still has his ult on top of that. Tombstone up in 8 seconds. Well, there's the ult there from Wagamama. Tombstone 5 seconds away. Another track he's thrown. Tracks everywhere. Ravage is down. No chain frost either. No big ult. There's the void ult. Catch his bat rider. But they're just going for triple X. They take out any uh, semblance that Furtis Pro have left of a carry. Or any damage that they have left as well. Void decides to toy with his food and not finish off poor old Tidehunter. Void though falling back now. Gets slowed now by another trap. The buyback from Temple Assassin. Void though gets it done in the BKB. It does nothing. The slow from Void doesn't proc though. But he's just looking for a BKB. The old in there from Witch Doctor not doing enough damage. There's a Firefly again. Void finally gets his kill. Four more heroes down for Virtus Pro. A triple kill for Mini on top of that. Midi now chasing after a GG is called, and that is it. Pulse, they take the match two to one. Virtus Pro, they put up a hell of a fight, but it wasn't enough in the end. A great second game from them, but unfortunately, game number three, Pulse, they were on lockdown mode. They said, all right, let's get this Void farmed, and that they did. Void never really got interrupted there, got ahead, and then was never brought back, was never pegged back. And in the end, the map control that they... That Pulse managed to grab. It was really that stranglehold that they had, forcing Virtus Pro back in the base, not letting them get any farm at all, and just buying time for Void. That was all they needed. So great two, uh, great two games from them there. But however, guys, I will be looking for an interview with somebody from Pulse in a few seconds. So stay tuned for that. Um, probably about five minutes actually. It takes me about five. It takes me about five minutes to wrangle some of the teams. They, you know, finish uh, grabbing post game drinks or whatever. I don't know what they do. It takes me about five minutes to find them anyway. But interview coming up and congratulations again to Pulse but of course Virtus Pro put up a great fight I think they're still in second place on our ladder I'll double check after this as well waiting for the throne to go down there we go so stay tuned interview coming up and again thanks for watching of course check out the Premier League.eu that is our website for all the Premier League stuff now we do have uh, no game tomorrow no match tomorrow however we'll be back on the 11th with two games back Two matches on the 11th, so stay tuned for that. But interview coming up shortly, so if you want to stick around, of course, I feel a community question, so make sure you're ready for that. Ask Pulse anything you want to know.